The undercurrent here is mentioned not just President Bush and the alarming economic situation. Rather, the biggest problem for Senator McCain is now his running mate, Governor Palin. When I asked about voters' concerns regarding Senator McCain, ranking first by a wide margin, his vice presidential running mate is not qualified to be president if the need arises, as it was phrased in the polling. Second place, the likelihood McCain would continue Bush policies. Third, that McCain economic policies would benefit only corporations and the wealthy. On the specific question of whether or not Governor Palin is qualified, 55% said she is not qualified to be president. 47% of those polled hold very or somewhat negative feelings about her. That's 10 points more than just two weeks ago, and it is mirrored by a recent New York Times survey. Governor Palin holds the largest negative rating of any vice presidential candidate in the 28-year history of that poll. As for Palin's continued plunge, one of our pollsters theorizes that it owes in part to Palin becoming a caricature. She refused to be anything other than a platform performer, leaving an incredible information vacuum in which she left it to the critics, analysts, satirists to sketch out her persona. And when she appeared on Saturday Night Live, that only reinforced lingering doubts. Let's turn now to the senior White House correspondent for Newsweek magazine, our own Richard Wolf. Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Keith. So, um, like a month ago when some of us said he should have dumped her before the vice presidential debate, he should have dumped her before the vice presidential debate? Yeah, well, that would have been very entertaining, but also completely suicidal. Look, if, you, if you're portraying yourself as a bold leader, someone who is pseudo-presidential, certainly more presidential than the other guy, you don't get a chance to do a do-over. And, and the problem here is, is really not just what the poll laid out, but I think uh, was pretty eloquently spelled out by Colin Powell on Meet the Press, which is that it raises fundamental questions about how seriously McCain made this pick. You know, in, in, in presidential contests, you can pick someone for the summer, you can pick someone for November to help you through the election, or you can pick someone for January for governing. And uh, it's not clear that this was a decision that really moved beyond the convention and a few weeks that McCain saw uh, a moment of weakness and opportunity. And also, in terms of the, the polling, and the, are we seeing that the voters are making this subtle distinction between uh, a situation McCain inherits, uh, inherits and tries to deal with, distancing himself from Bush, uh, whereas one of his own creation, uh, uh, selecting Palin becomes exponentially worse because it is his responsibility and whatever else you say about President Bush, he, uh, John McCain did not create him. Right. Well, he cannot distance himself from his own pick. But I think the Bush comparison is interesting. You know, in a weird way, uh, they, uh, both Bush and McCain have shown similar executive decision making about Palin in this case, because they both, again, see themselves as bold, decisive figures willing to make a judgment based on a gut feeling. And, and as we saw with President Bush, that leads to a very rapid sense of mission accomplished, but it can lead you into a quagmire. And, and Sarah Palin has proved to be a quagmire. We have uh, we've spent here talking a, a lot of time about the Saturday Night Live effect. If, if Palin began the process of making herself look like a caricature by leaving this big open space that everybody could fill, it would seem that, that, that we have some empirical evidence now that appearing on that show kind of sealed this, right? Yeah, you... Uh... There was no upside in doing the Saturday Night Live, not when the caricature was so strong. Some daytime TV opportunities would have been much better for her. But you don't erase the caricature by reinforcing it. And those skits were inevitable, predictable. Um, she hasn't made herself look more presidential. And this is how, you know, in enjoying the ride may be a lot of fun. The crowds are, are obviously uh, buoying up the whole campaign in some way, but um, ultimately it, it's not helping them get to where they need to be. This isn't just about the journey, it's about the destination. And if, um, if uh, having uh, the governor have a sudden uh, crisis at home that would cause her to withdraw two weeks before the election is clearly out of the question, and rehabilitating her image with two weeks uh, to go is seemingly impossible, what are the McCain options at this point? Do you put her on ice? Do you know, do, does she not see the light of day again after uh, an interview with Brian Williams tomorrow? Well, she has still got an appeal to rural America and small town America, and they are at least now dividing up the two candidates so they're covering more ground. Listen, if the ad pullback stories are correct, then they're really making a single play, which is for Pennsylvania, and they should both live in Pennsylvania for two weeks. She can deal with rural Pennsylvania. He can deal with some of the bigger cities, and that's their only goal to the Electoral College victory that they still must be hoping for. And what, by the way, as a last point, is the sell 
well in Pennsylvania that could get them over what may be in some polls a 10-point hump? Uh, you know, he's just got to hope that he can pull off some of the New Hampshire magic that worked for him eight years ago. But in terms of the positions, where the state is, the issues, it's a huge mountain to climb. Richard Wolf of Newsweek and MSNBC, as always. Great. Thanks, Richard.